So who will succeed in the metaverse? Who will likely be the company that garners the most stakeholder value from this future of an immersive experience on the web where we can go into different worlds, if you will? What, are, what would they need? They would need a ubiquitous device to take people in and out of these metaverses. They would need the ability for payments. They would need capital. They would need programming skills. And just as importantly, they would need a certain level of trust because whoever runs the company that takes you into a world where you develop relationships or your viewpoint is sort of the equivalent of our scientific God. I think the company that foots best of these criteria, simply put, is Apple. It has trust, it has capital, it already has what I think is the kind of the key entry point into the metaverse, which is the App Store. Think about the App Store, 750,000, if you will, metaverses that take you into a gym, take you into a brokerage house, take you into a place where you could potentially find a date. And they launch 750 new metaverses every day. So they're able to leverage other people's capital. You could argue that the greatest concentration and maybe the greatest toll on creativity ever assembled in one place is Apple's App Store. So what do we have? We have Apple with trust, capital, programming skills. We have the portal into these different metaverses in the form of the AirPods. And we have the computing power in the form of the device that a lot of us take around with us, and that's the iPhone. So the piece of tech hardware that doesn't get the recognition it deserves in terms of how transformative it is, is these, specifically AirPods. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy Buds are a fantastic product. They've sold almost 10 million pairs in 2020. In that same period, Apple's AirPods sold 114 million. So think about this, for every one pair of Samsung Buds that are sold, 12 pairs of AirPods are sold. If this was just a company on its own, just this, this one device was a company, it would be a Fortune 200 company. It would be one of the 200 biggest companies in America, just behind MasterCard, just, just behind MasterCard and just ahead of Estee Lauder. Now, why is that? I think a lot of it is instinctual, and that is we will not put anything on our face that we don't believe makes us more attractive uh, as a mate. Or that makes us feel inspired, right? And there are certain ways you signal how powerful you are or your attractiveness as a mate. And I believe wearing this, and I believe wearing these, says to the world that you're part of the one billion wealthiest, most creative people on the planet. That you're interesting, you're a good storyteller, you likely work in a progressive industry, you have a set of Western values that might be attractive to other people. So what do you see? You see people walking around with their AirPods even when they're not using them. Similar to the way they would wear a Rolex watch or the way they would wear, or the way they would wear sunglasses that they think make them more attractive, AirPods are now a form of self-expressive benefit. It says something positive about you to the world when you wear one of these. In contrast, I think wearing the Oculus says something very negative about you. I think it's the equivalent of a prophylactic that ensures you will not have children as no one will want to get near you. So a lot of competitors have noticed how powerful it is to be in the ear. And you're seeing companies ranging from Google to Samsung make huge investments in audio, specifically the audio that goes in your ear. Think about, think about when you watch a movie or think about when you're talking to someone or you're listening to radio. And then think about podcasts when you actually have the bud in your ear. It's a more intimate relationship. You can't hear anything else but that person's voice. When someone comes up to me and high fives me, I know that they've seen a video. When I get a long email that's very intense, very emotional, I know they've read something I've written. But when someone comes up to me and starts talking to me as if they know me, as if they're my friend, then I know they've heard me on a podcast. I know that I've been in their ears. And we're gonna see that more and more tech companies try and figure out a way to get right into your ears.